been running manufacturing companies, building skylights, solariums for 10, 12 years, industrial woodworking, dry kilns, uh, laminated beams, last 15 years, prefab housing, certified to CSA 277. So that's given me 35 years or so of experience seeing how materials are actually worked with and how workers um, put assemblies together and how drawings and plans are followed or not followed. Um, I was asked to find a material that could be used as a parging board for a prefabricated light steel foundation system a couple of years ago. Uh, I did some internet research. I came across the magnesium oxide board and it just looked too good to be true. Um, it comes out of China, so that raised the red flags. I found an American company, Magnum, who had been working with the product for about seven years. They had UL, ULC certification, meaning the factory is audited, and they had done most of the testing to get the American ICC certification, AC386 is the exact one. And so I jumped on a plane, flew to Florida, and uh, arranged to be the Canadian representative for the Magnum flavor of magnesium oxide board in Canada. The things that appealed to me uh, were really, it covers all of the main characteristics as far as being sustainable environmentally, uh, made appropriately, it could be neutral to maybe even negative greenhouse gas, extremely durable compared to all the different flavors of gypsum and also fiber cement and also as non-combustible structural sheathing. It's not that expensive. Half inch board going to market will be around a half, about a dollar a square foot. Um, and as you saw from the video, it's very easy to use. So all the standard tools that people have work with this material. Now, part of the uh, interest of this product to me is the history. This is perhaps one of the oldest cements used by humans. The um, site, which is the ore it comes from, could be calcined at low temperatures, and there are indications of magnesium-based cements going back to the Romans, Great Wall of China, um, so a lot of different things. Stanislav Sorel, a Frenchman, rediscovered magnesium oxychloride cement in 1462 and it's been used to this day as Sorel cement. It's used for oil well drilling mud, it's used for patching cement for bridge decks and uh, airport runways uh, because of its uh, very high strength fast set characteristics, also for industrial flooring. Uh, Van Stainer is the American who's credited with uh, reverse engineering the mortar in the Great Wall. About 50 years ago, people wondered how come the mortar is outliving the stone in part of the Great Wall. Uh, Van Stainer, who has patents for some of the magnesium oxide phosphorus cements for oil well drilling mud, figured it out. And over the last 50 years, the rigid board that you have as coasters or the other samples in front have been developed in China so that uh, these are some of the ancient sort of uses for it. And here's a more modern use, Type A 101. All the walls and floor assemblies inside and out use magnesium oxy board for both fireproofing and decoration. Uh, the Beijing Olympics, it was also a premier material. Um, its first exposure in North America is about 2003. Um, and so Magnum was one of the early adopters there. Also a group of companies in Alberta who started making the uh, MIPS, the new coin for the insulated panel. So there are now about three companies in Alberta that are pressing insulated panels, and there's about seven years of history of that product in Alberta. Uh, but in BC, really, we started to promote it about 18 months ago by doing presentations like this uh, to people like you. So it's got this pretty cool history. Um, the other interesting part is the composition of what it's made from. Magnesite is the seventh most prevalent mineral in the Earth's crust. Um, it's also prevalent in the ocean. Magnesium chloride is the third most prevalent mineral in the ocean. Uh, those two materials, uh, the magnesite is calcined at about 400 degrees, which makes magnesium oxide. That's about a third or a quarter of the temperature and energy required for calcium carbonate to become lime. Um, and when it's made here, the carbon that's driven off during that process could be captured. Currently, it's not to the best of our knowledge with the product made in China. 
but when it is captured, that will give this product a, an incredible <coughs> environmental carbon footprint, uh, maybe even carbon negative based on some research that I've read. Uh, magnesium chloride uh, currently mostly comes from places like the Great Salt Lake. It's used as a road de-icer. Um, so you've got two materials that are required for the health of people, plants, and animals that mix together form the cement. Magnesium oxychloride cement bonds structurally to cellulose, contrary to Portland cement. So when the cellulose wood flower is added, there's an actual structural bond, meaning that your, your, the composite material is stronger, and that gives the material better, faster holding uh, capabilities. The perlite, uh, and in some cases vermiculite, is added to basically reduce the weight. Um, fiberglass mesh gives us some tensile strength, and in our case, there's some talc to give the one surface a, a white, smoother appearance. Not all flavors of the board uh, use that. So really, that's the ingredients of it. There are some types of magnesium oxide <coughs> cement that add phosphorus, and, and that gives it some extra uh, characteristics, uh, which I'll talk about a bit later. Um, it's a very clean extraction process. The mine on the right is in Invermere, BC. Uh, the purity of the mineral, of magnesite, magnesium carbonate, is about 95 to 98% coming out of the ground. So there's no tailings, there's no chemical conversion. Uh, the material goes to Exha, Alberta, which is the picture on the bottom left, where it is calcined and becomes magnesium oxide, which is then used for uh, well, a variety of uses from pharmaceutical, pharmacological, industrial, and, and now in North America it's actually starting to be used to make board. There's still currently only one pilot plant in the States, and that's in Houston, Texas. Uh, they're using the Bay Mag magnesium oxide because it is some of the most pure stuff. There's another product called Flame Block which is a layer of magnesium oxide added to OSB. It's marketed through Louisiana Pacific. Um, and a, about a 16th inch layer of magnesium oxide added to OSB gives it a 20 minute fire rating. A company called Barrier Technologies uh, actually makes that product and markets it through LP. Um, so the process of making this is also very environmentally friendly, it's very low embedded energy. When the two um, ingredients are mixed together, and they need to be mixed together appropriately, uh, it's an exothermic reaction. Uh, to cure properly, it needs to be at about 25 degrees Celsius for a number of days. Um, our product comes from Guangzhou, China, where that's pretty well the ambient temperature all the time, and so we have good comfort that we have a fully reacted product. The risk with this material, uh, if there is one, is if the reaction between the magnesium oxide and the magnesium chloride is incomplete, meaning they are added together in the wrong sequence or the wrong temperature, then there is excessive free chloride ions in the finished board which are highly soluble and in prolonged is uh, water contact that could degrade the board somewhat. The Chinese government puts a maximum of 10% free chloride ions. Our board is about 5-6%, uh, but that's the one, um, I guess, caution with this product if there is one. Adding phosphorus to the mix actually renders the product insoluble um, and that's the uh, material that we find that's got a couple of thousand years. They got their phosphorus from fermented plants or uh, animal waste, dung. Um, so the uh, analogy I like to use is you can have a couple of people in a kitchen with the same ingredients and they start to make a cake or a loaf of bread and one of them will get a cake or a loaf of bread and the other will get a pancake. Uh, same ingredients, same kitchen, same everything, but the slightly different way of putting it together, it either rises or it doesn't, and in this case we either get the complete reaction or we don't. Um, and so that's the one major thing that I've learned over the last year to make sure we have a, a durable, predictable board. The paste is put onto a sheet, a smooth sheet, the smooth side down. It takes about an hour for the uh, initial set and then several days for curing. After those several days at uh, ambient temperature, it's then cut to size, and in our case, it goes through an abrasive planer, which gives it a close tolerance thickness. 
um, and, and really it's, it's that easy to make. So it's a process, it could be replicated anywhere. Our goal, uh, big picture wise, is to use the Canadian or the Chinese made product to develop awareness uh, because I go into rooms like this uh, almost a couple, three times a month and, and nobody puts their hand up. So my main job is education. Within a couple of years though, we want to be making the board here. All the raw materials are here. They're of higher quality and purity. Uh, we can obviously control the production better. We can make the board lighter and stronger. There are already concepts and formulas to do that. And, and so that's our goal. It'll be one of the first times that a traditional Chinese industrial product and manufacturing comes to North America to save money. Um, the cost of our board, if I sell it for a dollar a square foot here, 40 cents of that is the shipping cost from China um, because it's just, it's relatively heavy, although lighter than fiber cement. 